one of the most likely candidates to break into the all-male top tier at Goldman Sachs is leaving. Beth Hammack is calling it quits after 30 years at the bank, and no woman has ever been appointed to the role of chair, chief executive officer, president, or CFO in the company's history. Joining us now is Bloomberg senior reporter Sridhar Natarajan. When you look at the departure of Beth Hammack, who not only was a very senior executive at the bank, but also previously the chair of TBAC, the Treasury Borrowing Advisory Committee, how big of a deal is it for Goldman to lose someone like her and in the context of some other prominent women leaving the bank? Exactly, for all the reasons you mentioned in your question, not just the chair of TBAC, she was the longest serving chair of TBAC. She made partner in 2010. She was known for her work with regulators and government bodies. Uh, she was once billed to possibly be the CFO of the bank, which at Goldman Sachs, at this 155-year-old institution, would have been a big deal. She was passed over for the role at that time, but we were told back then, back in 2021, that she's still positioned for greater things at the firm. It is important because there is a clear recognition that Goldman needs to diversify its top ranks across Wall Street. It's a real problem. There are several institutions that are grappling with the exact same issue. But it is quite stark at Goldman Sachs when you look at the top rung right now, but also some of the executives that the firm has added as its next generation leaders. Even there, you're not seeing the type of participation you expect from women who are coming through the pipeline to the highest levels at an institution like Goldman. It's interesting because we can see the agitas certainly among women and men alike inside of Goldman Sachs. The Financial Times also reporting that there were top bankers threatening to quit, one being the son, I believe, of Sir Martin Sorrell, co-head of mergers and acquisitions globally, Mark Sorrell. What is happening here amongst the top talent? Is this a lot of posturing inside of Goldman to become higher up on the ranks? The posturing is the threatening to quit. The posturing is the throwing the toys out of the crib. But fast forward 12 hours and we already know that it has actually translated into some action there. Co-head of EMEA, European Invest EMEA Investment Banking, Gonzalo Garcia, has actually left the firm. Look, we need to take a step back and realize what time of the year we're in. The calendar is important. We are in February. We're a few weeks after bonus money has been paid out. There is a lot of shifting of seats and roles across Wall Street. Some of that happens, but some of these changes can also be avoidable. And based on all the conversations we've had with people inside Goldman Sachs, to lose people like the, of the caliber of someone like Gonzalo Garcia could very much have been avoided if they had taken care of their organizational processes as well. Less than a minute here because we know that Citadel, for example, Goldman talent moving has led to high positions elsewhere. Uh, Pablo Salome over at Goldman had moved over to become CIO at Citadel. Citadel now making more than $4 billion from its commodities business. Do we know if that's a direct translation and does it pose a threat to Goldman? to see their talent move into these types of positions? For one, they're clearly making a lot more money than Goldman in commodities. We've talked about the last few years that commodities trading desks across Wall Street and Goldman was particularly strong in that place, had been making a lot of money. But when you move to the buy side and when you move to a place like Citadel and you look at their performance, four billion in a year, when actually commodities performance last year was supposed to be a little weaker than prior years. Four billion dollars in profit is a big number. Seven billion dollars is what the flagship fund at Citadel return. So it clearly has a big role. That unit, that group is led by Seb Barrick, who came from Macquarie, which also has a strong commodities background. So clearly something is going right at Ken Griffin's hedge fund.